my name is Clint Carey, and I was going to share some of my summertime beaver work with you. Uh, for today, I chose to show you a counterbar set. It's probably one of the most used tools in beaver trapping, fur taking especially uh, during the winter months. But I still use them a lot during the summer, and I was going to show you here one of my favorite sets. So we'll get to showing that. Um, I hope you can see it from the camera, but what I've done here, I just take my shovel and I dug out about yay deep into the bank. Uh, similar to like a pocket set if you were setting for coon. Um, I do that. Go back a little bit over my hand deep there. Take that. I've got my cotton bar here on my stabilizer. And I'll just block that hole off with the conifer. Kind of A real simple set, and it's actually one of my go-to sets for summertime beaver trapping. Um, if I'm using the conifer, kind of reason being there's a dam right back there behind the camera. But, and it's got a little bitty crossover on it. And yeah, there's different methods you could use to use the crossover. Um, I hear guys, some guys now using some cage traps and crossovers. But you're still going to catch your turtles, I would imagine. Um, but the main reason is the turtles. Uh, that's why I don't set conor bears over the crossovers. Even your snares will get messed up by turtles. So instead, I opt if I'm going to use a conor bear to dig this little trench set out here into the bank, pocket set, and I'll camouflage it in. The nice thing about summer is all this green stuff and how natural it looks. You can really cover up your trap nicely. And I've already moved all this back. If you're in the summertime and you hadn't done it much, you can't be too careful, uh, which I'm in West Tennessee, so you get where I'm coming from. I've already looked at all this over with my tater rake for cotton mouths because you're going you're to see a bunch of them if you're in the water in the summertime down here in the swamp. So it's about a 30 minute walk down here. You see my pack basket. It's got snares in it and I've actually got a snare back there with a collar. And if you want, I'll show you how I set that up here in just a second after we do this one. But I'm going to take this conifer bar now that I've got it pretty good and camouflaged. I don't mind green stuff sticking through the sides over there. It kind of covers up my trigger wires there. They don't look unnatural at all. I've got grass here in the water. And I'll let some overhang out there. When you get overhang in behind this trap, like what I'm doing now, what that does is it really breaks the pattern. Now, if you're looking and all that's sticking out, all that's going over the top of this is this trap then it really stands out. So when you start putting a little bit of overhang to it, other things are hanging over it, and this trap doesn't look unnatural at all. Um, I'm a, still a firm believer that any beaver can be caught in a conifer. Kind of now the situation, the terrain that you're trapping, and everything at that spot may not be the best set to use, but I guarantee you, if you were persistent with it, and you kept at it, and you camouflaged your traps real well, mine are all uh, spray painted, different colors, <coughs> but I think you can catch any beaver with a conifer. Kind of uh, I use footholds a lot in the summertime. I use snares a lot in the summertime. But like I say, I still use my conifers kind of a lot. And this right here, I don't have a problem beaver right now, but uh, on this property, I cover approximately 3,500 acres. So. Now, on, this, this place was terrible before I got in here last year. This will be my second year on this property. <coughs> and I'm going to share with you kind of how that I got this property and how that I'm keeping this property. Is that I do maintenance sets all year. Okay, I clean the beaver out. I'll come in here, especially in the winter, you know, when cotton mouths are in here and check and set a few traps out. But even in the summertime. 3,500 acres, the beaver will move in on you before you know it. And if he's wanting to do any kind of dozer work or any kind of work, 
they'll have this place flooded and make you look like a dummy before you can turn around. So all year long, I've got it planned out to where I come in here and I do maintenance this. Just in case a beaver does come through, I'll have something there. And every month, you can't hardly get around the whole property, 3,500 acres, because like I say, it's a 30 minute walk out of here just to this one spot. And it's a mile stretch nearly, this creek right here. So you pick out different spots I do, and I say you gotta plan it out. Okay, I'm gonna go in here this month and get this part of the property, set a few traps. And you do that along the way. <coughs> and one way to keep your clients happy, I send in, every month I send in a report. What we've done, if we've caught any beaver, what the property looked like, if it was still dry, or if there was any new activity. And I tell them thank you. You know, you, you have to thank them, or they just think you're anybody else. You've got to be just a step above your competition, whoever your competition may be. So, you do those maintenance sets, and you come in here, you check the property every month, and what it does is you're, you have to charge enough. Like I said, there's cotton miles in here, so these some people are going to wonder, well, why do you charge so much, you know? What is it? And you can tell them about the cotton miles. You can tell them about how hot it's going to be. Uh, it's going to get up to 100 degrees today, which there's some cloud coverage that's going to help me out. But it's going to be hot. And, you know, the bottom line is they don't care. They've got problems, and that's what they're paying you for, and that's really what they want to hear about. So you have to explain to them, hey, I'm going to take your beaver worries away. I'm going to be the one who's worrying about the beaver for you. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to check your property for you. I'm just going to send you monthly reports. And so far, every time on this property, when he's called and had a problem, I responded within 24 hours. Now, I've explained to him, if I'm out of state or something, I've got another guy that I'm going to send in here, and you will get a response within 24 hours. Now, I don't know about everybody else, but my competition would not do that. It might have been two or three weeks before they responded after a call. So, those kind of things set you a bar above. When, you, when he calls you, he called me one day and said, I've got a problem with a culprit. And I said, well, I'm about an hour away from you. I said, can you wait and just show me where the problem is? Said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll wait and show you. Now, how do you think that made him feel about me? Oh, well, he was tickled to death. He called me, and I was there an hour later. <laughs> That's how you stay a step above. And a lot of times your competition's only going to come when he has problems. Well, if you don't go out and you don't set what I'm calling maintenance sets and keep a good eye on the property, he's going to have problems that you're going to be just like you was when you first started the property. So you have to keep at it. You have to keep at it, and you've got to send him things every month, like I'm saying, letting him know you're keeping at it. Let him know, don't worry, I've got this under control. And if you see any sign, call me, and I'm going to be there. 